If you travel as far east as you can go in our southwest and southeast regions, you ultimately run into the Atlantic Ocean and some fantastic fishing opportunities. We're going to introduce you to some of those opportunities on this week's episode and a place you may not have heard of. You will hear about it in the next half hour because Fox Sports Outdoors is on the air right now. It's time for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southeast region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. That is a beautiful green marsh out there with lots of canals and trails running through it. And swimming around in that water are spotted sea trout or speckled trout, flounder, redfish, and lots of other inshore saltwater species. This is the Mecca, the inshore fishing destination and vacation hotspot known as Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. We've traveled a long way to do a little inshore fishing here, and we're gonna be joined in the Mako Pro Skiff 21 by Captain Inglis Glover, who does many of our fishing reports in our Southeast region. This is gonna be a lot of fun and a great experience for me that I've been looking forward to for a long time. And while we're out doing that, we're taking you fishing for your local fishing and lake reports from our expert team of insider reporters. Hey, glad you're along with us for this week's episode. Let's get it all started back at the FSN studios with your weekend planner. According to the Salooner tables, this should be an outstanding weekend to go fishing. Overall, both days are forecast to have excellent conditions with peak daylight action starting in the afternoons at 219 on Saturday and 314 on Sunday. Expect the sun to rise at 712 and set at 730. And Friday night will showcase a full moon, so evenings should be bright. We'll be right back with all the latest fishing reports from around the area. And I'll return on the Ask the Pro with Bassmaster Angler, Dean Rojas. Stay with us. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer. Motor guide trolling motors, because accuracy matters. And Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Champions aren't born, they're made. Fish on. Got there we go. Let's see what this is. I can't tell if it's a trout or a red. Looks like a nice one, whatever it is. Come on, Stay on there, baby. Get him. Oh, that's a big a monster. Get him. Net him, net him, net him. Got him. That Got him. Big trout. trout. We caught a monster. That a boy. Holy cow. Look at this, big daddy. Oh, wow. wow. Look at this trout. <laughs> Yes! Oh, what a hit! Oh, baby! We have caught a giant monster Merle's Inlet trout <laughs> right off the bat. Dude, look at this. Look how fat this Ooh. fish is. Oh, man. Oh, golly. I cannot believe that just happened. Oh, boy. Well, let me tell you. Let me situate you. We've made it out. Come over here and sit by me so, so they All can right, see buddy. you, too. And, uh, Whoa! We've made it out, and we just got out. The sun's just coming up over the top of the clouds. And uh, Captain E. Hey, buddy. English Glover. He is our insider reporter for the southeast region of our viewing area. And he also hosts a few of our episodes as well. And we're in his home territory right here. And uh, we've made it out. And we'll tell you a lot about what we're doing and where we are. But let's get this fish back in the water. Talk about Merle's Inlet a little bit. Tell us a little bit about what can happen here. Well, like most in the southeast, uh, the, our inlet's very small, though. We, we're only probably about two miles at our widest point and five miles long. Um, very, a lot of boaters here. We're, we found a little area we're trying to get away from traffic, but we've got black drum, red drum, sheep's head, uh, redfish, speckled trout. We got it all here. There's so many things to do here, uh, but there's a lot of traffic. So we, we know we found an area to get away, get away from all the traffic, and there's a ton of fish in here. We got a great fishery here. Well, there's also some near shore reef fishing. When the wind is calm, you can get outside, take some live bait out there, catch flounder and Spanish mackerel, king mackerel, cobia, lots of different things outside yep. the inlet here if you can get out. We're going to tell you a lot more about that, but right now we're going to get back to fishing, see what else can happen here while it's early, get you started with some fishing and lake reports from your local area. This part of the program is brought to you by Visit Jacksonville. Northeast Florida offers great fishing, family fun beaches, top restaurants and resorts that are easy to get to and offer outdoor fun for everyone. 
So come on, visit Jacksonville. Well, if you don't live in the South, you can't feel it. But for us who live down in the deep South, fall is definitely in the air. And bait fish are really moving along the coast as those water temperatures start to drop. I was talking to Captain Patrick Garmerson, who fishes uh, and guides on Mobile Bay. And he's catching lots of nice big sea trout now. These fish are going three to five pounds. Patrick says that the fish aren't as abundant when you're fishing for those great big ones. But if every time he makes a stop, he's going to catch three to five fish. Keep moving, you'll catch a nice big limit before the day's over. He's freelining live pogies along the edges of drop-offs in the lower Mobile Bay area. So the water's in good shape and uh, there's plenty of bait around. He's already caught fish over eight pounds and these are 30 inch uh, big uh, spotted sea trout. He says when you're fishing with uh, live pogies like that, you catch plenty of redfish. A lot of these fish are slots, but there's some big bulls too. In Mississippi, the cobia run continues to do very well. This is the fall run of fish. The fish are a little smaller than they are in the spring, but there's lots of 20, 30, 40 pound fish. They're south of the islands. They tend to be around bars and look for bait schools. Those outside edges of bait schools are a good place to set up and uh, either drift and chum or uh, I mean, you control for them too with live baits. And along with those cobia, there'll be plenty of redfish. Uh, these are slots and also bulls. And there'll be big jacks and Spanish mackerel, maybe even some kings. Farther offshore in Mississippi, uh, the elephin tuna fishing is starting to really come on strong. These are, this is the time of year for big elephins. A lot of 50 to 80 pound fish and some of those are gonna go over 100 pounds. A lot of the big fish are caught with either live baits or they're chunking around the oil and gas rigs far offshore. They're also catching blackfin tuna and these fish can be jigged up and uh, these are uh, 10 to 15 pound fish. They're good in the dinner table, really fun to catch on uh, vertical jigging uh, with light spinning tackle. Captain Tim Cutting on St. Simons Island in South Georgia tells me that the uh, mullet run has started and lots of pogies are moving out of the sounds and bays and moving down the beach and that's triggering great fishing for almost everything. The bull reds are moving into the sounds and inlets and around the jetty areas from Savannah all the way to the Florida state line at the St. Mary's River. This is a great time of year to catch big bull redfish and there's lots of them they are going 50 pounds or more. If you just want to fight big strong fish, now's the time to do it. There's lots of big jacks, sharks, that sort of thing moving down the coast following these bay schools. Well that's it for the coastal south. Get out on the water and take a youngster with you when you go. Hey everybody, welcome back. We're just outside Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. And as you can see, the terrain around us and the stability of the camera has changed a lot. We've actually made it outside the inlet, out into the Atlantic Ocean. We're on some artificial reefs out here. We're with Captain Inglis Glover. And I'm gonna roll in some video from our Lawrence HDS-12 Gen 3 unit. The left side of the screen, you're gonna see that structure on the bottom on the traditional 2D. The right side is the scan, the structure scan down scan image, but uh, what are we looking at, Inglis? What we got here on, on this reef is Paradise Reef. Um, you got a lot of concrete structure here, some old bridges, um, different things of that nature. Uh, DNRs put them here, our South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, as well as some fishing interest groups. Uh, we've got some armored personnel carriers out here, but it creates a great environment for these fisheries. It's close to shore. The live bottoms that we would have to fish, other than that, would be 14, 15 miles offshore. So we, we fish in here, we've got great fish, king mackerel, Spanish mackerel. It's a great place for cobia and huge flounder, gold flounder this time of the year. Now you're looking at some video right now of a flounder that we did catch. Now, unfortunately, we had a little problem with our video, I'm sorry, with our audio. And so we didn't have any audio with this catch, but you're looking at a, a catch of a gulf flounder that uh, Inglis caught a little earlier. And uh, this is not a big one by any stretch, but it is a much better flounder than you can catch most of the time inside the shallower water inside the inlet, right? It is, it is. Typically the fish out here average uh, a lot larger than what you're gonna catch back in the, in the backwaters. But I mean, you can have great days in there in the inlet and great days out here, slow days here, slow days here, it doesn't matter. But typically your larger flounder on average are gonna come off this reef. All right, that gives you a little taste of what the outside looks like. We're gonna get out of here and go back inside and try some different kinds of fishing. But right now we get you fishing and lake reports from your local area where you live. The Hydrowave by TH Marine uses actual sound patterns recorded of bait fish and or of bass feeding on bait and emits those recordings through a speaker under the water. The goal is to activate bass and or keep them active for longer periods of time. To make your next fishing trip more effective, check out the Hydrowave at thmarine.com.
Hey guys, uh, here in Tennessee and Kentucky right now, we've got a couple things that we're dealing with that uh, impact fishing. One is the winter drawdown. Now I realize it's summertime, but they start in July and they start drawing uh, a couple of the key, the Tennessee River and the Cumberland River. Uh, both get drawn down for flood control in the winter time. So that impacts fishing, takes a lot of water out of the system, uh, makes a lot of places that were shallow basically dry and a lot of places that were a little deeper pretty shallow. So just bear that in mind, it's especially uh, significant when it comes to navigation. So stay in the buoys on the Tennessee and Cumberland River. Uh, with that being said, we're also experiencing a turnover, which uh, just kind of, quite honestly, jacks the fishing up, makes it kind of tough. I'm gonna tell you a couple places that I know the fishing's good. One, if I were in Kentucky and I were looking for somewhere to go catch one, I'd go to Lake Cumberland. Uh, go see Greg at Lake Cumberland Outdoors. He'll tell you all about what's happening up there. And number two, if I were in Tennessee, I would go to Percy Priest. The summertime boating traffic's over and that lake is so healthy and so phenomenal. So guys, it's good here right now. We'd love to see you on the water. God bless. Okay. You got one? Yeah, I got one here. All right. Fish on. There we go. Little flounder. Little one. Now he's actually a keeper. He's about 15 inches, but. There you go. All right, well, we've changed again. And English, why don't you explain what we're doing now? We keep changing up on these people just to uh, show everybody the different diversity of the fishery here. But what, what's this kind of fish in here? Well, what we're doing right now is, uh, this is Huntington Beach State Park, one of our beautiful state parks. And these are the jetties that come out of Merle's Inlet. And we're fishing right up on the beach here where the bait's getting trapped in this corner. And these flounder lay in here feeding on them on these changing tides and you know we're, we're fishing right up on the edge of those rocks those fish are going to be right up there that's another nice plan we'll let him go get bigger all right well that shows you another kind of fishing here available out of merle's inlet I'll tell you the diversity here is just incredible stay with us we're coming right back to south carolina right after this Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Tracker Boats. It's more than just a boat. It's a tracker. Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. Mercury Marine. Official outboard of Fox Sports Outdoors. And Lawrence Electronics. Find. Navigate. Dominate. Yeah, that's a better one there. That's a good pull right there. Let's see what I got. It's a good fight. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Come in that net. All right. That would be a keeper flounder if we were keeping them today. Yep, it sure would be. This is the main jetty system right on the mouth of Merle's Inlet. It protects the actual inlet on the inside with all those expensive, fancy boats they've got in there. What happens here, uh, English said is that these flounder will move in here where all these waves are crashing and it's pinning bait fish up against that jetty. And so what we're doing is got a little Carolina rig, we've got a little small mullet and we're throwing it in there and letting it drift right along the edge of those rocks. And if you can see here, that would just be a good keeper flounder for you right yes, there. Got to be 14 inches long for you to keep them here. We're not keeping them today, but uh, We'll let that one go back. Watch this in this clear water. This is gin clear water in here. There you go. <laughs> so like right that. to the bottom. <laughs> English, uh, tell me right quick, uh, th these flounders stay here all the time or do they just come when, when the wind's out of a certain direction or on a certain tide or what? You know what? You know, like I was telling you about the uh, it being, you, I, you were laughing at how calm it is right here. We, we got some waves coming through, but actually this is pretty calm. But if you got that wind coming out of the south or, or off the east, um, typically it pushes bait and gets everything back in here and they just stack up in here. And you also can catch some rat red, some smaller redfish in here, but typically those flounder will get in here, they lay up along that structure, just like they would out on the reef or in the inlet, they'll lay along this structure. And what we're doing is working these mullet right through those areas. All right, well, just a different kind of fishing. I tell you, there's just so many different ways you can catch fish here. It is just dynamite. Let's get you some more fishing and lake reports from your local area. This week's Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi Freshwater Fishing Report is brought to you by Lake Gunnersville, Alabama. Boasting 69,000 acres of clear blue perfection, the area offers hotels, lakefront cabins, public boat ramps, and restaurants. If you prefer big fish in a big pond, Gunnersville is the right destination. www.fishgunnersvillelake.com 
Now the late summer is hanging on across the deep south and so are the high air and water temperatures. These conditions will slow down the bite and make it uncomfortable to fish. However, anglers are still catching some fish in the region. One place where the bite is still good is on Nodley Lake in north central Georgia. This 4,180 acre impoundment is a good place for striped bass fishing this week. Although the reputation of this lake is for giant stripers, right now you're catching numbers of fish in the two to eight pound range. You'll need electronics for this to locate the pods of blueback herring in deep water on the lower end of the lake near the dam. The stripers will be nearby. Once located, drop a live herring vertically down to them, or you control a deep diving crankbait through these schools of fish. Now channel catfish action is good also over in South Alabama on the tailwaters of Claiborne Dam. You want to put the bait in any breaks in the current and should some, produce some bites there. Simpson County Lake in south central Mississippi is reporting some good fishing for largemouth bass late in the evening using dark colored crankbaits. Targeting brush piles on deep points or along creek ledges works best. Eat it baby, something's eating it. Got him. Got one, let's see what this is. Feels, feels small, but it feels like a flounder. Yep, little one. Another little one. All right, well, we got fish working in here anyway. <laughs> Pretty much one after the next ever since we pulled in here. <laughs> some small ones, some a little bit better. And that one goes right there. Right, slapped it right in the camera. One interesting thing is that uh, you can see people walking up and down this jetty. You can actually walk out here and you don't have to have a boat. You can come into State Park and uh, walk, and that's a long walk, a couple of miles, but you can walk out here and actually have a chance to catch some of these flounder that we're catching right here. It's called Huntington State Park right here, Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. You got Ooh, him? Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, little. Little one? Yeah, feels like a flounder though. Of course, with flounder, you never know till you get them into the boat. There you go, that's not I, I not, mean, another keeper. Yep, there we go. There we go. Yep, he hit that thing as soon as I got it away from the rocks. Beautiful fish right there. All right, and then which species is this? This is gonna be your southern flounder. Your southern flounder. And how do you know? In summer, it's just a multitude of white spots all over them. Okay. See all the white, lighter colored spots? Three different species of flounder. That's right. And the gulf one's all out there on the reefs. Okay, well, we've got stuff working out here. Showed you a couple of three different ways that you can fish here at Merle's Inlet. What a great place. That one's going back. We'll be back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Be sure to join Fox Sports Outdoors again next week, Thursday night at 6, or catch the repeat airing Sunday morning at 8.30. And you can always watch the latest episode in full HD on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Plus, catch up on all past episodes by clicking the archive button and see lots of how-to and product videos by clicking the how-to button. Also, stay up to date with the latest fishing news, videos, and photos by clicking the follow button on our Twitter feed. And get lots of that same info by clicking the like button on our Facebook page. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. Lose, fueled by passion, driven by innovation. Feel the difference. Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. And Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. Welcome back, everyone. It's time for the Ask the Pro question. This week, Sid wants to know, how many rod and reel setups should I keep on my boat deck? We recruited professional angler Dean Rojas for an answer. That's a question I get asked all the time and it's a great one because, you know, for me as a professional, I, I have an endless amount of rods and reels. But for the weekend angler, for somebody who's going out on a Saturday afternoon or fishing a club tournament on Sunday morning, 
is something that you need on the, on the front of your deck is about five or six rods. And you always like to throw things that are conducive to the style of fishing that you like to throw, whether it be a reaction bait or you like to pitch or flip or throw a Carolina rig. And having five or six rods up there uh, on the front deck, uh, that way you can change throughout the day and kind of figure out what the fish want and so forth. So I think no more than six rods on the deck. You get any more up there, up there it becomes cumbersome. You start kicking them, you start stepping on them, and that's never a good thing with rods. So uh, keep that in mind. Keep it simple. Six rods is all you need. Thanks, Dean. If you have a question for one of the anglers, visit our website, follow the Ask the Pro link on the right side of the page, and send it in. Now one lucky viewer wins a new pair of shades on the Costa Catch of the Week. Hey everybody, we've got the boat loaded back at Merle's Inlet on dry ground, and it's time right now for someone to win a free pair of Costa sunglasses in this week's Costa Catch of the Week contest. She is Leslie Bean of Ocean Springs, Mississippi, showing off a 60 pound amberjack caught in the Gulf of Mexico. If you'd like to be our next winner, just go to the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com, follow the instructions in the Costa Catch of the Week area on the right side of the homepage, and you could be our next winner. And you can see all of the Costa frame and lens styles on their website by going back to the front page of our site and clicking on the Costa logo. There you'll see all of the 580 polycarbonate and glass lenses in all the different shades and colors and all of the frame styles, including the one I was wearing on this week's episode, it's called Prop. Next up on the Academy Right Stuff, it's the right gear to catch speckled trout, flounder, redfish, or any of the inshore saltwater species like we caught here at Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. It begins with the Luz TP1 Speed Stick Inshore Saltwater Spinning Rod Series. It's the white colored rod built specifically for this style fishing, the microwave guide system, the wind grips, and I've got it matched with the Luz Speed Spin Tournament Metal Spinning Reel and spooled with Strin Fluorocast Fluorocarbon Line for the super clear water here. As far as the baits and lures are concerned, you'll need two different sizes of dog walking topwater style cigar baits for early morning speckled trout fishing, a little smaller size bone color on the right, a little larger size on the left. For the flounder fishing and red fishing, you'll need a simple Carolina rig with a three quarter ounce lead weight, a barrel swivel, an 18 inch leader, and a little small flounder hook. Some of us live our lives with a little devil on one shoulder and the little angel on the other. The little devil whispers in one ear, it's too late. You've made too many poor choices, too many mistakes. You're too far gone. Why don't you just give up? The angel on the other shoulder whispers in the other ear, today's a new day. You can make a fresh start. It's never too late. Keep going. I'm here to tell you the truth. There's a God who loves you unconditionally. And no matter what's in your past, what's happened to you, it is never too late. There's always hope, and that's the best news I can give you for today. Hey, we had a great time today fishing with Captain Inglis Glover here at Merle's Inlet, South Carolina, including catching that great big old fat speckled trout early this morning on a topwater. If you'd like to book a charter trip or a guide trip to go fishing here at Merle's Inlet, you can contact Captain Inglis Glover at the information you see on your screen. From South Carolina, till next week, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.